Somebody tried to stop my engagement right there on my wedding day, and when I tell you, it was my stepmom. Okay, 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 did I spoil the story? Of course not, because with this one, there is loads of juicy details. My creepy stepmom has ruined my engagement party. My stepmom's a lot of things. She's a bit shallow and tends to think only of herself. I've known her for years and have accepted that we will never get along. Her presence in my life has been constant. <laughs> I do remember a time when she was not there. Despite that, I decide to invite her to my engagement party even though my father passed away two years ago. While most of the family have not invited her to any events and have treated her like she simply does not exist, I didn't want to do that to her. I decided to allow her to be part of the wedding preparation only because of respect for my father. He told us to take care of each other and that was my way of honoring his request. I soon came to regret this decision. Luckily, I found out about this earlier before anything happened, but to say that it's not made me sick to my stomach, the way she's been so brave with her action would be a lie. Okay, so a couple nights ago, my fiancé and I had our engagement party. Everyone from his side of the family was invited, and the party, well, it went well. No kinks at all. I was so happy because we've been wanting to get married, and I mean for absolute years. It's only now that everything's aligned for us. He's just gotten a job in the city, so now we'll be closer to each other. I was busy talking to my cousin when my fiancé emerged from nowhere. His whole demeanor changed, and he looked very much spooked. I excused myself from my cousin and asked him to speak to him. When I asked him what happened, he told me that he could not even put into words he looked like he was on the verge of a panic attack. So I took him to the corner. There I comforted him and told him to tell me what had happened. He explained to me that, well, what just happened a few minutes ago and I was shocked. That was the last thing that I thought would happen. Did she have no shame? I need to confront her for the nerve that she had to make such a proposition. It had to be a joke. I saw her coming into the room, looking stoic and unbothered as if she had not committed a sin. To me, it was the biggest sign of disrespect and I've ever gotten from her. Did she not understand how lucky she was to be a part of the engagement? I went up to her and told her to repeat what she just said to Jordan. She looked at me like I was crazy and told me that she had not spoken to Jordan. Jordan's mom was passing by and she asked her why she was lying and before I could do anything, she slapped my stepmom across the face. She asked her if she did not have any dignity. How could she try to blackmail Jordan into marrying her instead of me? That's right, you read that correct. My stepmom approached Jordan with a marriage proposal. She told him that she had always been attracted to him and could not bear to see him waste his life with little old me. She told him that if he wanted to live a very good life, he would dump me and marry her instead. If he did that, then she would take very good care of him because of the fact that she is rich. My dad left her all of his money and I barely got anything from him. I did not care when I found out. I had my own job and money and could live within my means. However, my stepmom has been wasting his money and I fear that she will not even last a decade with it. She tends to spend a lot and act very self-important when she has money. I just had no idea that her importance would extend towards asking my fiancé to leave me for her. He's a couple of decades younger than her, for goodness sake, and she was stunned when she got slapped. Asking my mother-in-law where she got the nerve, and she pointed at me and told me to kick that woman out. I laughed and told her that I would do no such thing. She then said that she was going to press charges, and I told her, Go ahead, I dare her. I could testify that Jordan's mom had gotten provoked. My stepmother rolled her eyes and told us that we were overreacting. She said that she was testing him to make sure that she was with, you know, me for the right reasons. I told her that I had a mother who could do that. She did not need to do that for me. She said that she was very hurt about how I took this and she felt insulted. I told her that her little joke was not funny and she had to apologize. She looked at me like I was crazy, asking me why she had to apologize. And she said she was always joking with people like this and none of them had ever given her a hard time like I was. I told her that she made my fiancé uncomfortable and this was not okay. 
She then said that she would rather leave than have to deal with such disrespect. I told her it's best that she left because she's ruined everyone's mood, and the rest of the party went by in a blur. Everyone heard what happened, and I could tell that they were talking about it. They just would never say anything to my face, but they were talking about my stepmom and her proposal. After the engagement party, my future mother-in-law called me and Jordan. We discussed what happened at the party to great length. We also asked Jordan a few questions, and he revealed that she had always acted a little weird around him, but he never gave it much thought. He did not want to cause a scene, so he never said anything to me. At the time, my dad was still alive, and he had great respect for him, but he said sometimes he felt uneasy around my stepmom and the way that she looked at him. I wish that he told me sooner, so that I would have never invited her. That was what I got for being too nice to her and trying to include her in things, but now I'm not going to do that, especially with how she has been acting for the past week. She's been spreading lies about what really happened at the party, claiming that she suspected Jordan was a gold digger, so she offered him money to leave me, and she claimed that she did it for my dad, who told her to take care of me. So now people in the family have been messaging me. They want me and my mother-in-law to fix things with my stepmom. Neither I nor my mother-in-law are interested in that. We have both agreed that she's a predator and cannot be allowed anywhere near my wedding. My father must be absolutely rolling in his grave. She's so disrespectful to his memory. Have all the men in town suddenly disappeared to her to want mine? I get it, I get it, he's incredibly handsome hunk. Smart, hardworking, you name it. But there's other fish in the sea her own age that she can have. It feels so much like when I was growing up and always seemed to be in competition for dad's affection. Whenever she got his attention, she would gloat. Not verbally, but in her actions, and she would show me that she's better and loved. Now it feels like this is what she wanted to do. She could not even seduce him with her natural charm, that's the sad part. She had to offer him money so that he would consider marrying her. Even that money was not enough for my loyal fiancé to turn on me. It would be crazy if he just decides that he prefers her over me. I would be absolutely humiliated that I would not even be able to show my face in the same world. <laughs> Good thing that he truly loves me and has common sense. If he did not, I would be telling you a different story. Anyways, I have to go for now. You know, wedding preparations do await me. I will update you soon. What's up everybody, Mr. Reddito here. We have multiple updates to check out today, and if you're enjoying today's story, go ahead and subscribe for more daily videos. Here is update number one. I'm fuming. If I see that woman, I would not be responsible for what I do to her. I do not get what she's doing this to me for. Is she still upset about the slap, or is it something else? I'm trying to figure out why she's so determined to ruin my wedding. First, she tried to steal my fiancé, now she's after my venue. I just got an email from the venue telling me that I cannot have it for the day because they are double booked. They did give me back my deposit as long as I notice, but that's not enough. I needed the venue specifically. I cannot see myself getting married anywhere else, so... Of course, I decide to investigate and see who took the venue. I did not have to look far. Someone in the family sent me a picture. My stepmom planned a charity event at my venue at the same day that I'm getting married. Rude. I'm not at all intimidated by the fact that she planned the event. However, why did she have to take my venue? I mean, I'm also very suspicious about how she managed to bag the venue. It's not an easy place to get. As far as I know, you have to book months in advance. All I know is that I would not let it slide. My fiancé wants me to let it go, but my mother-in-law wants me to fight for the venue. So, I want some advice about how I can go after her legally. What she did was wrong, and I'm pretty sure that there's a way I can get justice for this. I feel so blindsided and betrayed, and what she's done has proved to me that she's just as petty as she used to be. All of the progress that we have made over the years is gone. Needless to say, she was not invited to my wedding. 
I'll get the venue back and embarrass her in front of everyone. Does she not have anything better to do with her life? Well, she has gone way too far right now. Update number two. So, I have no luck with the getting of my venue back. I tried, but there's no way I can get it. She seems to be good friends with the owner, and besides, it would cost too much money for me to go after her legally. While she seems to have the money to waste about, I don't. I'm on a tight budget for my wedding, so I resigned myself to the fact that she got the venue. That was until she approached me, of course. She was smug, knowing that she uh, got the best in me. She told me that I could forget about getting any good venue, for she was friends with all the owners around here. She told me that I should have kept my little mouth shut and not spoken to her like that. She asked me how I could accuse her of such things in public, and she then laughed and said that it was such a pity that he did not take her offer. He would have had such a great life. A better life than I could have given him, considering his financial situation. It was the first time I heard about this, so you can imagine how blindsided I was. I told her that she needs to leave. She was seriously annoying me, and it was taking a lot of me not to say something I would regret. She laughed, and said that she would get what she wanted. She told me that I liked to act like I was all that. But she could easily take from me what she wanted, and... What she wanted was him. She told me that if I dare say anything about it, she would ensure I gave up my venue. Even more. She was straight up threatening me, and you know what? I was not going to stand it. I told her to leave, and she was acting like an old woman that my husband-to-be would never look at. She was just a sad old cougar who could not even buy anyone with money. But when she left, I was left with the thought of the fact that Jordan had a secret that he wasn't telling me. The issue with the money that she mentioned. Jordan had started a job in town within the same field that he's been working in the whole time. We're usually honest with one another, so I don't understand why he would not tell me if he had money issues. I sent him a message telling him that we need to meet up. So he came by later that evening, and yes, we had a great dinner and got to talking. I told him that she had approached me and told me that he had a money problem. Jordan was shocked, and then he would not even look at me. I asked him if that was the truth and we needed to postpone the wedding. That was because I did not get to know how that woman knew about his financial situation, yet I had no idea about it. It was better for us to wait to get married if he had money problems, you know. That's when he took me by the hand, looked me in the eyes, and told me that everything was handled. He would fix everything. And I would have a wedding of my dreams. I tried to protest and force him to tell me the truth, but he insisted that he had everything under control. If we did not have trust, then what did we have? I had no choice but to trust that he would make sure that our wedding happened on time. I hope that I've not made the wrong decision and that he's telling me the truth. For I feel that there's so much more at stake than I'm being made aware of. Maybe... He wants to protect me. That's what I'm going to tell my delusional self. Update number three. I should not have been delusional. I should have stood ten toes and wanting to find out the truth. Instead, I trusted him. I was betrayed. I was betrayed in the worst way possible. I was left feeling anxious, spiraling out of control with my dreams crushed. She had done it. She ruined my life and I had let her. And you know what? He helped her do it. A week. A week after I lost my venue, I woke up to a message from her. It was a picture message that was set to view once. I opened it up out of curiosity, obviously, only to reveal my true horror. My fiancé was right there, sound asleep in her bed. Ah, he had done it. Eh. He caved into her. I sent her exclamation marks unsure of what to say because I was so incredibly horrified. She told me to check my email. I did. There I found an email from the venue owner telling me that the venue was available and paid for on my wedding date. Suddenly, my whole breakfast escaped my stomach. I felt physically ill, physically dizzy. The next couple of hours passed by in the days as I cried and I screamed. I had already forgotten all about the fact that I had to go to work. 
The only thing that I could think about was that she had won. She's gotten her way. And it was clear that he was willing to participate in this so that I could get the venue. At some point, I retired to my bed and switched off my phone. I woke up to him calling me outside, but I ignored him and tried to get some sleep. I could not deal with that shame. The rest of the week passed by in a blur. I called in sick to work and did not leave the house, and I could not find the strength. My relationship was over. This was the one thing that could have ended it, and his mom called me many times, but I ignored the calls as well. I could not even form a single sentence, and I felt sick to my stomach. So I stayed in my room for the rest of the weekend. I did not talk to anyone, and when people came to the house, I pretended to be out. Finally, after the days of hibernating, being unable to stop visualizing my dear Jordan and that witch of a stepmother, I decided that messed up stuff would not be my story. So guess what I do? I draft a message that I sent to everyone, stating that my engagement was over and the wedding was canceled, and the next day out in public was absolute hell. Everyone was looking at me. They'd all seen the news, and I was sure they wanted to know exactly why it's canceled. Later that afternoon, my assistant informed me that Jordan was here to see me, and he did not want to leave, so I told her to let him in. When I saw him, I could not help but start bursting out crying. I asked him how he could sleep with her like that. He had humiliated me and hurt me, and he told me that he came here to explain. He had been tricked. Blindsided, of course, because he refused to do what she wanted. I then asked him what it was that she wanted, and he told me that she had approached him, telling him that she would cut a deal with him under certain circumstances. He wanted to make things up to me, so he agreed to meet with her without my knowledge. So he went to see her, and she poured him a stiff drink. She told him that he had to spend one night with her if he wanted her to leave him alone and give me back the venue. She was crazy, and he told her so. He told her that not even her money would make him betray me. So then she said that he turned to leave, and he barely made it to his car before he passed out. He said he did not remember anything the next day except for the fact that he woke up in a bed with her. He had no idea what happened, but he was never conscious during any of it. So then I asked him how could I believe him because of all the secrets that he's been hiding. He told me that he tried to talk to me the whole week, but I could not be bothered. So he told his mom what happened and that he had been taken advantage of. So his mom suggested that he find a way to prove it, and so he managed to do it. My stepmother was not as slick as she thought she was, for she had bought the stuff that she used to drug him right down the road at the local pharmacy. She claimed that she was having sleep issues and needed something that would knock her out. So he got footage of her getting the stuff at the pharmacy, and in addition to that, he got halfway footage of the hallway, which showed her and the hotel worker taking him back to her room. This showed that he was barely conscious when this happened, and while all this was circumstantial evidence, as they say, it did prove that he was not in his right mind at that time. So I take all the evidence, went over it, combed it down, and told him that I would think about it. It was clear that she was obsessed with him and willing to go to those lengths. If she could do this, then what else was she capable of? She could take advantage of him and lie to me so that I would dump him. It sent shivers down my spine the way that she was so damn diabolical. On top of that, my blood boiled as I realized that she's taken advantage of my husband. And this was a criminal offense. Clearly, all those months ago, she's been deadly serious. She had this weird obsession and really just wanted him all for herself. Update number four. Guys, I believed my fiancé and his mom believed him too. But I needed to find a way to make my stepmom pay. I suddenly wished that I had disputed my father's will so that she would not have all the money that was making her have such a big head. But I had to settle with what was second best. First... We found the hotel worker who helped her carry Jordan back to the room. We told him that we knew what they did to him and that they would be facing jail time. 
He gets very scared and told us that he only did it because he needed money. He claimed that when he started helping her out, she gave him enough money to take care of his entire family. That's when I had to ask him how long he's been doing this and how many people he helped her drug. He told me it was not just the drugging, then proceeded to tell me the story of who my stepmom really was. I encouraged him to go to the cops, run to the cops, with what he knew if he wanted to save himself. After that, I sent forth an invitation to all my guests. I said that I would be having a party at the venue instead of a wedding. I still needed her to think that she won, and I had a feeling that she was going to show up, for she would want to gloat in my face that she had gotten what she wanted after all. <sighs> It depraved where a person, then it would be her. The next couple of weeks passed by normally. I tried to get my preparations back in order and also work to get as much proof against her as possible. And then the day of my so-called party came. For the first hour, everything was normal. I was interacting with my guest and watching out for her. She showed up not long after and made a beeline for me. She then said that she hoped that there were no hard feelings, but I had seen on my own what kind of person Jordan was. She seemed so self-righteous and smug, thinking that she's won. Then I went to the guest and announced that this was not just a party. I had a surprise for them. I went to my room to change and came out in my wedding dress. Obviously, with Jordan right there by my side. Everybody in the room was absolutely speechless. They thought they were going to a party, not a wedding. I smiled as we went up to our officiator, who married us right on the spot in front of the shocked eyes of my stepmom. She was incredulous and looked like she was about to attack me. But alas, she was too frozen even to move. When the part of ejections came, I noticed that my mother-in-law had moved to stand right beside her and was keeping a tight grip on her arm. I could tell that my stepmom was confused, which was good because that was not the only surprise for the evening. My now husband went up to the stage to make a speech. He said that while we have been having problems, we chose to fix them because someone was playing us against each other. He made a whole emotional speech about our love and how much we... Will always care about one another. He then said that on the other hand, he wants to expose a predator in the community. Someone who liked to bribe young men for favors and force them if they refused. Someone who had taken advantage of them. Just then, like clockwork, baby, the police bust in, on my cue of course. They went up to her and immediately arrested her for drugging my husband and taking advantage of him. She was taken out kicking and screaming, saying that we've tricked her. I was alerted that she was going to stay in custody for the rest of the weekend and would only be up for bail next week. Well, I'm praying very hard that she does not get bail. She deserves to rot in prison. It was not only my husband, but other young men who fell prey to her and her taste. I get that some people are into older or younger people, but forcing people to be with you is crazy. Therefore, one less predator roams the street today because my husband was brave enough to speak up about it. So, OP wants to get married to the love of her life, Jordan, and we have to deal with this insane stepmother. I mean, she's completely off her rocker trying to seduce Jordan, trying to give him money, which is bribery, but luckily, towards the end of the story, we find out she's off the streets. The predator is gone. I want to know your thoughts about this because the comment section was going crazy. Basically, if you were in OP's position, how would you go about handling it? Let me know in the comment section down below, guys. If you're new to the channel, my name's Mr. Redito, and I narrate stories like this every day. So, if you want to, go ahead, subscribe. I'll see you guys tomorrow, but please remember, it's cool to be kind. Peace.